I'm about to share is just a fraction of what I have listed at sdaapostasy.org so as to keep this video short and on point. After what happened recently with Pastor David Gates, who not only ignored the Word of God regarding how only false prophets are going to be setting dates for prophesied events after the fulfillment of the 2300-year prophecy of Daniel, which, by the way, came to fruition in 1844, he's actually changing the Bible's prophetic definition from a day equaling a year, as Ezekiel 4, 6 and Numbers 14, 34 defined it, to using the Vatican's claim that a day now equals a day, so as to shore up a so-called prophetic event he claims began in the fall of 2015 and will come to fruition in the spring of 2019. And so I felt it was time to warn some of the brethren in the Seventh-day Adventist Church who are right now being moved by the Lord to seriously consider coming out of that church that it is, in fact, time to come out of her right now. Hopefully, this compilation of facts will bless them with the confirmation they need to make the right choice. And again, this is just a fraction of the growing compilation of articles, pictures, videos, studies, statements, and SDA doc files that I have posted on sdaapostasy.org for those of you that need more information. And so with that said, were you aware that the Seventh-day Adventist Church and 3ABN recently had Dwight Nelson declaring on camera that Allah is God, among other things. And there wasn't so much as a slap on the wrist, even though the Bible says otherwise. And Muslims keep killing Christians each and every day, and recently burned down a Christian church because they used the name Allah for their Christian God, which further proves Allah is not the name of the Christian God, as the SDA church claims. But were you also aware that the Seventh-day Adventist Church had John Carter repeating the same thing that Dwight Nelson said on camera? The SDA Church also has Doug Batchelor saying the one hour with the beast prophecy comes at the start of the plagues instead of at the end of the plagues, as the Bible says, which we know will cause much confusion in the church because many people trust him. Sadly, Pastor Doug Batchelor used to boldly speak out against Vatican prelates, but now he is proudly taking pictures with them. And just a few months ago, he told an SDA woman on a radio call-in show that she can go to a Jewish temple wherein Christ is boldly denied to celebrate with family members in their religious ceremonies on the Sabbath day. Is it any wonder more and more Seventh-day Adventist churches are looking like pagan cathedrals of Rome, and there are Seventh-day Adventist pastors dressed in the pagan clothing that the popes wear, while addressing the pope as Your Holiness in a Vatican Mass on video? SDA church leaders all over the world are repeatedly bowing in worship to Vatican prelates so as to allow the confusion of Babylon to flourish. You know, if just one SDA pastor did this, well, it'd be easy to stop him by removing him from the pulpit. But when many in the Seventh-day Adventist Church do this all over the world, it not only makes it impossible to stop them, it makes it clear there is an obvious Vatican agenda moving all throughout the church to lull their members to sleep. The General Conference of the Seventh-day Adventist Church has also stated in writing just under three years ago that the Seventh-day Adventist churches that are keeping Sunday holy each week is no big deal. And were you aware that there are Seventh-day Adventist leaders that not only studied with Jesuits in the Vatican, they proudly photographed themselves wearing the robe of the Jesuit as well as displaying their pagan hand signals on camera at their graduation. The SDA leaders have also uplifted the popes of Rome on camera and more and more leaders address him as holy leader as well. Ben Carson, by the way, also called the Pope a holy leader not too long ago. The past president of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, Neil C. Wilson, has even stated in writing that calling the Pope Antichrist is forever to be placed on the historical trash heap, further changing prophecy, just like David Gates did. The Seventh-day Adventist General Conference has even joined their church in a legal contract with the second beast of Revelation so as to help create the image of the beast in their 501c3 contract. And worse yet, the SDA church has invited and allowed Roman Catholic Jesuit priests to preach onto their students at Andrews University. And another time, they allowed a Catholic priest to preach in a Seventh-day Adventist church on video. The SDA leaders have even asked their students to bow to Allah in a mosque on camera and then boasted of their blasphemous act in one of their magazines to show Rome that they embraced the ecumenical spirit of the man of sin. 
And were you also aware that the Seventh-day Adventist Church actually has an Adventist Vatican in Maryland, of all places? And the SDA Church changed its logo recently to display three waves depicting 666 using ancient hieroglyphics and the upside-down cross of the anti-Christian Church of Rome. The current Seventh-day Adventist president, Ted Wilson, who is the son of Neil C. Wilson, who said the Pope's no longer Antichrist, he just declared that there's nothing in the pipeline when it comes to Sunday laws, even though there are thousands of articles from all over the world that say otherwise. And so is it any wonder that they now have David Gates, who not only admits on camera of talking with high-level Jesuits, he's actually setting dates and even rewriting the Bible truths on how prophetic symbols are defined so as to match with Vatican dogma. Worse yet, he has caused thousands of poor souls in the Seventh-day Adventist Church that watched his video to believe it's now perfectly acceptable to base his findings on his own opinion, statements from friends, discussions with high-level leaders in the Catholic Church, and the dream of a friend. When the Bible clearly says in 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 20 and 21, that no prophecy of the scriptures of any private interpretation, for the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost, which is always going to be backed up with scripture. Isaiah eight twenty confirms that. With all that happening, how is it so many people are still sitting in SDA churches as if there's nothing wrong with the apostasy of their general conference leaders and church pastors? Well, all I can say to those of you that are still in the SDA church, it is plainly declared in Ezekiel 14.10 that they shall bear the punishment of their iniquity and the punishment of the prophet shall even be as the punishment of him that seeketh unto him. In other words, the false prophet will be punished by our God and those that believe the lies of that easily exposed false prophet will also be punished by the Lord. And this is especially true today when we have all 66 books of the Bible so as to use them to vindicate the truth and show just as prophesied, the Seventh-day Adventist Church is filled with many false prophets on their pulpits today. And another thing, as prophesied, these men are purposely lulling their church members to sleep with all their government-approved theology that borrows heavily from the man of sin in Rome to keep them in the pews. What's amazing is that the only way people can fall for the lies preached by these fallen leaders and pastors is if they ignore the word of God regarding what they say, as well as what the Lord commands regarding coming out of an apostate church. For it is plain, from the Old to the New Testament, that the only way to understand prophecy is to obey the God that wrote it. The fact the SDA church joined with the second beast of Revelation in a binding 501c3 contract proves they are no longer obedient. And in their rebellion, they have grown blind to the point of trusting mankind over the creator of mankind. Or as Paul put it in Romans 125, these men have changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. Thank you for watching. God bless.